Setting up a family calendar smart display. Hey there, this is Tom with Tom Tech Show. And uh, today we're going to go over something I've, I've been looking at. We'll just jump right into here. Uh, I've been looking at getting some kind of display, you know, that, that I can put in the kitchen somewhere that I can sit there and have it run uh you know, our calendar. So everybody knows who schedules what, who's going where, who's doing what, and, you know, who has appointments and, and all of that, you know, that we're, uh, as family, you're going here and going there, and what days somebody works or doesn't work and all that. And I was looking at the Echo Show, and I'm like, oh, that seems, you know, like it would kind of work. And I went through, and I said, okay, it's got all these things here, little notes, whatever. I'm like, okay, that's seems okay but and it's you know 250 dollars and i'm watch a few videos on it and said it's it's basic you can kind of move the little blocks around and do a few things and i'm like you know if i'm gonna do that i'd want to really be able to customize it but then i got to thinking like you know i've got monitors sitting all around here this is you know my, a computer job i got monitors sitting here I still have two monitors. I had another one sitting over there, and um, I've I've got you know a Raspberry Pi. This is a Raspberry Pi two. Um, you can tell because I've had to pop in a Wi-Fi card here to make it work um, on the network. So I needed something that would maybe work on this and be able to run and and do that. I'm like, there's got to be something out there. So I mean, I found a couple different ones, but I ended up on this thing called. DAC board. Now, uh, you can create a free account and do some things free. Uh, there's with the, if you look at the pricing, um, I only really only needed one display for the family to put in the kitchen. So that's one screen included. Uh, you can only use their predefined screen layouts, which I found one to make fit. I mean, if I'm not going to pay anything for it, you know, do I want, see that's what the difference was $250, a little bit customizable or free and only minorly customizable. Well, I'll take free and, and with, you know, granted hardware that I already had, I didn't have to go buy any of this and stuff and be able to do this whole thing. So as calendars, photos, weather, news things, which I'm not gonna use mo much of that. So you can create an account really quick and easy. Um, and we're of course using here the the free version of it um, and the first thing you do is you go into screens and I click a screen and I define it there's we're using the the big time screen large date and time with weather and calendar I'm like that's perfect that's exactly what I want so you can set up backgrounds now you can do some their app authorizations over here on the side you can connect it to Google Calendar Google Tasks Google Photos so all those can can be brought in. And what I did was I went to and just created a Google account that's just for this device. So I put all the appointments and everything else that is just for this device and just able to, you know, we put all our events in this one calendar and I color code them. Or here's the calendar. So they're color coded. There's a green thing for dad. There's a blue thing for me. There's, you know, a red thing for kids schedule, you know, other different things here for who's doing what right so uh, I've connected that all up it's pretty easy you just go you click you know add you're gonna add Google photos and then it's gonna bring up the the Google account screen for you to be able to add those uh, however you want um, so, but then we go into screens and we look at what we can do now we can have Google photos be the background like cool uh, I can set up the calendar, so I've attached the calendar to it from my app authorizations. Perfectly fine. I've got it showing three weeks, month calendar, starting on Sunday, and I'm having it show the event locations so I know where we're going. Uh, then we have the date and time. I've set it for we're in East Coast, so America, New York. We're showing the AM, PM. You can set the date format if you want it to change a little bit. Uh, we have some weather going across the top. We're in Plant City, Florida. Give us a five-day weather forecast. Nice and easy. We're not doing any news. 
We're not doing any to-do messages. I have a custom message across the top that just says our family calendar. And that's, that's kind of it. Then if I click view screen, then it comes up and it shows me this is the screen that I get on the display that's sitting out in the front. And this refreshes every, oh, I think 20 minutes or every hour. I think the free version is every hour. So then every hour it'll, it'll update. So you add something to the calendar within an hour, it'll be on the screen. And then the images and stuff you can put, um, I created a, with the account that I created here for um, the calendar, I also created one to do photos. So I just created a photo album for backgrounds and the front kitchen everywhere is pumpkins. The entire kitchen is fall pumpkins. It doesn't matter that it's going to be the end of winter and then going into spring, the kitchen will be fall pumpkins. I've come to the realization of that. And then once it gets to be fall, then it'll all match again. But you know, we're pumpkins through and through. Um, so, so that'll be the background of it. There you go. And then I load the software to so go to, so their software. So they have a place where you can download the software. So, uh, the, you, they download the operating, you can download it to a Raspberry Pi. Now they have it set up for a three, the three series, the four or is Pi zero two W. Well, I have a Pi series two and that's not going to, I, I tried it, I downloaded their software, I tried it, it didn't work. So I just went straight to um, Raspberry Pi and uh, downloaded it straight from here. So, uh, and and loaded it on here from Raspberry Pi. So, and that's, that's pretty easy. I'll put, so I'll put the link to how to uh, load the software on it from Raspberry Pi on here. It was pretty, pretty simple and easy but then after that you got to make some changes you go to to get this to work you go to uh, displays here the next one down over here is displays and here's my display there's a predefined screen and you can say link it with device or TV and you go to you just open a browser go to dacboard slash link and then put that code in there and it will show you the it'll attach that display to that defined screen so it links all up so once the browser loads then you just go to if i come here to screens and go view no it's not not view it's displays and then go to info it gives you this all oh, this will be masked out but it gives you this special uuid that show that when you launch that it shows the display so we need this because after we link our display in the raspberry pi we have to make some adjustments to the raspberry pi once it gets set and ready to go okay so go through the steps here real quick we define our screen we go through this pattern of and you can look at the different layouts some of them don't display very well on this kind of scrunch screen that i'm working on right here but um Look at the layouts and you can always click this view screen up here and that will get you to see what the screen looks like. Pretty easy and then go through all the different tabs of what you want on it. Um, anything that's uh, outside of the free level, it'll pop up a message that says you need to pay for this and you know you can't use that. Like you can't use loops to make a bunch of screens and have it loop through. Uh, you can't use schedules or you can't make your own templates. But if you're very good with the basic screen, which I am, and then we go to the display devices and we link that to it. So you go on the Raspberry Pi, we go to uh, dacboard.com slash link, and then that gets us a code. And then that displays that on the browser on the Raspberry Pi. But when you display it in a browser on the Raspberry Pi, it still has the header and the menu bar of the Raspberry Pi. So what we need to do, move that down a little bit. Okay, so as you're there at your console of Raspberry Pi, you go to sudo nano etsy xdg lxsession lxde, this will all be in the description. 
uh, auto start. So we're going to edit the auto start. So there's some commands here. Then we, the last thing here, we're going to do Chromium dash browser and we do dash dash kiosk. So that loads the browser in kiosk mode, which means it's going to fill the entire screen and just be complete that screen. And then back here, when we linked this here, so you can go to info and you can see this URL here, dashboard with this UUID. Okay, that's what we're going to put after it. So what it's going to do is open the browser, kiosk mode, and load that URL, which will then display your, you know, your screen, full screen on the monitor. Now, the last thing that I didn't like was that the mouse cursor is sitting dead center in the screen when you do that. So I found, did some searches and found this thing called unclutter. And all I had to do was do sudo apt-get install unclutter. It installed that. And then uh, the mouse immediately went away once I installed that. So there's some other options that people play around with. If you search for unclutter, you can find those. So I'm going to go plug this back in and let it boot up and it'll take some pictures of it and we'll check it out. Okay, now there's the display in the kitchen. Like I told you, there's pumpkins everywhere. And that's what it looks like sitting there. And all nice and neat. So then everybody can walk in, see the schedule, see what's going on, and uh, what, take care of everything. The other thing I did have to do was go into the Raspberry Pi settings and tell it to not blank the display. I know it's going to burn in the monitor, but I've got a ton of monitors. These were cheap monitors. These are about like 10 years old. So we'll just sit it there, let it run, and be good. So there you go. Nice little display for your family calendar in the kitchen. You go. Got any questions about this? Comment down below. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to these videos and my channel. And thanks a lot for watching. Take care.